And I do think this is actually also really important. It takes a hard look at the over-therapization of children. And, you know, I'm very pro-therapy. I've been to lots of therapy. She's got some questions in there about adult therapy as well. But it's about how we're therapizing these children now in school with non-trained, you know, armchair therapists who don't have any sort of appropriate degree, who are also really into trauma porn. So, you know, every day at school now, the teacher's like, okay, think of a trauma. And how did you handle it? And they're trying to bring the child back to something terrible that happened to him or her, which in and of itself is not great for them. You know, it's like they come to school, they're ready to learn math, and they want somebody wants them to espouse their worst trauma. And like, how'd you deal with it? Okay, great. Okay, so now on to Pythagoras. It's not that easy. <laughs> and the person trying to do it is nine times out of 10, not that, that qualified. So yeah. I think well, that it's remi- actually I mean, really- I feel like we probably all know a few people who are therapists now. And we think back like that person, they were a disaster, you know, but it yeah. makes sense because they were in therapy all their lives. And because they were exposed to so much, they they somehow think they can then become the teacher. And then, so these very troubled people become therapists. I, it just, just perpetuates the cycle. I also really believe at this point in my life that immersing yourself in past traumas is very counterproductive. I am not a licensed therapist, but this is my own personal belief. I love my therapist who I've had for years now because he's only forward looking and like present focused to focus. Like, how do you feel about that? And mm-hmm. what can you do to change it? And like, what's within your power now to make this situation better? It's, he's never asked me about my, you know, like, what was it like when you got bullied in seventh grade? By the way, it's in the book, Settle for More again. <laughs> Number one New York Times bestseller. Um, but he doesn't want to get into that. And that's helpful to me. I don't want to get into it either. And it, yeah. I'm telling you at 53, I now believe that compartmentalization is the way to go. Like yeah. <laughs> immersing yeah. yourself in the bad things is not a great way to go through life. Yeah, yeah. There's there. I mean, the classics sort of revisit things with your mom and your dad. And like, there's probably some of that, but a lot of it has got to be more like, here are some tools to handle it yes. rather than like, let's go spend How do you hour manage the feelings it. when you're feeling them? Yeah. I think that's the really, that's the main important question in therapy. How do you manage the feelings when you're feeling them? He's big into cognitive behavioral therapy. And as you know, I've said this to you before, I boil it down to, okay, when you're talking yourself into the very scary place, something terrible is going to happen to me, a child, whatever, you can do that. You know, your brain might want to take you there, but you must, you're required to make the counter list. Mm -hmm. What are the odds? It's not going to happen. What are the arguments Mm -hmm. against this stuff that you're feeding into your own head? That works really well. 